Kathy, uh, you know, we I was trying to prep everybody. Uh, we're here on IGTV, and this is a production of New York City Metro and Forgot. And we have Kathy Braun on the line with us right now. And Kathy is going to give us kind of like a warm up and starter into this whole area of Bitcoin. All right. Um, go ahead, Kath. Why don't, why don't you start us off? Okay. Uh, Bit Bitcoin is a, both a legitimate and a nefarious adventure. Okay. It started off at first as a legitimate adventure. Um, an example of a legitimate effort would be a user creates an e-wallet by entering an email address and password. The money can then be passed to the Bitcoin by either wire transfer or some other legitimate means such as cash. At this point, a customer can either use their own machine and their own cycles to generate legitimate revenue. That is what's called mining. That's a term you'll hear a lot. It simply means generating bitcoins. A bitcoin pool is another term. This is a pooled mining service that allows multiple users to work together to mine bitcoins. From a legitimate standpoint, it's a way to gain more revenue with less people slash resources. On the nefarious end, it is already stepping into the environment custom made for malware. So when surfing the internet, it is written that the virtual bitcoins somewhat magically appear. However, when a legitimate endeavor, it costs real money and it's a real investment. This is the crux of the contrast between legitimate and nefarious. As the contrary to using personal funds, how hackers create those bitcoins. So bitcoins are bought and sold for dollars or other currencies on online exchanges. Bitcoins are also used to purchase goods and services. There's a list that you, you can surf the internet and you can get a list of who will accept bitcoins. It's very easy to find. It takes credit, Bitcoin system takes credit for high tech, security, and financial expertise. It also applauds itself on being decentralized, but in fact its very existence is the fact that it is somewhat centralized. Logically speaking, without technical rhetoric or anything else, the only reasonable conclusion is that in order for it to be able to track people and their money, there has to be some centralized vehicle. And there is. There are main servers. Okay, so as mentioned, Bitcoin support, supports wallet encryption. A lot of what I found and, and with working with other people and researching my own experience, it, 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 it takes a lot of um, technology that was already out there and just kind of manipulates it. kind of reminds me of Microsoft's e-wallet a bit. But anyway, if you forget one problem though, <laughs> if you forget your credentials, you lose your Bitcoins. Um, if your wild file is stolen, the hacker has all access to your Bitcoins. So you're on your own. Um, no one, not even the Bitcoin developers, can get them back for you. So right here, um, you are in danger. Okay, how many people will use the same password and the same email for their banking, their trading, um, and, and their investing? So it opens up uh, a whole door of problems even before anyone tries to hack into it. So malware can take the centralization and create mining pools that create more bitcoins that generate income and transfer um, profits into their own accounts. Malware can be purchased on such sites as CC Plant, um, Hack Forum, and various underground uh, networks, including buying and selling of botnets on IRC networks. Um, an example would be one install equals one bot, which equals one compromised host. So those less than stellar individuals have advertised a greater return for your investment example. One Bitcoin could potentially become uh, $28, kind of like sell like the stock market. Um, as far as how you actually can, can work with this Bitcoin, um, it's very, uh, to, to generate, it's very CPU resource intensive. It could bring down like a normal PC. Um, therefore, uh, both legitimate and uh, nefarious do look for people to process the bitcoins, the mining, um, and sometimes they'll barter these uh, resources for the bitcoins. Uh, underground runs software that operates silent RPC mining pools. Um, you can sell, if you're going to buy it for nefarious, you can, uh, they'll sell a botnet for mining payload for as little as $25 to create the binary pool, and then that generates the revenue. Uh, source code, $50, uh, buy and sell 1,000 bots for $10. Uh, and remember, the botnets are what generate the Bitcoins and that can be transferred into money. 
Um, the Russians use a bot master. Uh, they sell the bot master let's, at last uh, hearing about $200, and that will provide you for a complete installation. Um, so there's other implications, identity theft, and they're getting more and more sophisticated. I'm going to get more into that on the next talk. I don't want to run on too much. and you know, I mostly wanted to go over what these terms are and generally how um, both the legitimate and nefarious are still um, working on it at the same time. Okay, Kathy, uh, that, that sounds very good.